so welcome back to another video on the finance value guy today we're going to be talking about using the very most intelligent model claude to analyze stocks so let's not waste any time and let's jump right in so the first step that we're going to do is like in the other video what we're going to do is we're going to head on over to yahoo finance and then we're going to find the stock that we want to value so once you've found the company that you want like i said in the previous video there's going to be two main pieces of data that you want to get one of the first pieces is you're going to want to get the statistics. This just basically allows the model to understand the history. You can see right here, what's great about this is that it has data from 2023, 2024, and basically the historical data that's going to give it the values it needs. Now, what's also good about this is that it already gives it the enterprise value to EBITDA and already gives it the enterprise value to revenue and the peg ratio for five years expected, which are all things that initially you would have to calculate yourself. Now you can see right here, it also gives you a lot of these other values, which are going to be what you needed. So all you want to do is just go right click, click print, then just make sure that this is saved as PDF and then save it. Then go down to the financials and then you want to do the exact same for this right here. Now that you've got that, just add these two as attachments to your chat. Also, another quick thing that you don't want to do, don't include analysis estimates because language models get very confused when trying to make predictions and they'll usually just side with whatever bias you do initially have. So this is a basic prompt that I'm going to leave in the description. So you can see right here it says, I have the historical financial statements from Microsoft in the PDF format. The company's current market cap is $3.5 trillion. And based on this information, can you analyze key financial metrics and trends and estimate the company's future for growth potential? calculate a fair value for the stock using common valuation methods, and then provide a recommendation of whether or not the stock appears undervalued or overvalued. And then we just click enter into this. So now you can see what it is doing is it is going through all of the data. And the reason why you do want to use Claude here is because what Claude will do is it will actually calculate an intrinsic DCF valuation that is a little bit more scientific in terms of the valuation. So what you can see right here is that it gives us a lot of information to work with. So you can see right here, it does have all of this data that it firstly extracts. Then of course, it then comes up with the metrics. So it says right here that based on these metrics, we can observe the following trends, strong profitability with high margins, solid revenue and earnings growth, excellent returns on asset and equity, strong balance sheet with more cash than debt, robust cash flow generation, and future growth potential. You can then see that, of course, it does talk about the future growth potential based on four several factors, consistent revenue and earnings growth, high profit margins indicating pricing power and efficiency, strong computing position with cloud computing and Azure and productivity software, and continued expansion into gaming and AI technologies. Then, of course, this is where we get to the juicy stuff. So it basically talks about the valuation analysis and it says, let's use a few common valuation methods to estimate Microsoft's fair value. So the most common valuation method that is used is the discounted cash flow method. So assuming the current free cash flow, which is 63.52 billion, the growth rate, which is 15%, which they're assuming for five years, then 5% terminal growth, and then the discount rate, which they've initially calculated right here, you can see that this calculation yields an estimated fair, fair value price of $425 per share. Now, remarkably, this is actually quite close to Microsoft's actual value of $410 per share. So you can see that it also calculates something else as well, not just the DCF, it also calculates the relative valuation. It looks at the current PE ratio, the forward P ratio and the peg ratio. And it says compared to the broader technology sector, these multiples are slightly high, but not unreasonable given Microsoft's strong position and growth prospects. Then of course, we do get a third valuation, which is really nice, the dividend discount model. For the forward dividend yield of 0.81%, and assuming a long-term growth rate of 8%, we get the fair value of $166. And this method does suggest the stock is overvalued, but of course, it's worth noting that Microsoft is not typically valued based on its dividend yield. So even though we do have the valuation of $166 looking at the stock, this doesn't really matter that much because this is the dividend discount model, which is usually used to analyze stocks that are based on dividends. So then of course, we do get the final recommendation. And it says, considering all valuation methods and the company's strong financial position and growth prospects, the DCF model suggests that the stock is slightly undervalued. Relative valuation indicates that the stock is fairly valued to slightly overvalued compared to its peers. And the dividend discount model suggests overvaluation. But of course, like I said before, this is not the most appropriate for a growth oriented tech company. And it says, given Microsoft's strong market position, consistent growth, 
and future potential in cloud computing and AI, I would rate this stock as fairly valued to slightly undervalued in its current price. Now, this is where we get some final actions on what we actually do. And here you can see we get some nice information. It says the recommendation is to hold with a slight lean towards buy for long term investors. And then investors should consider, of course, their own risk, yada, yada, yada. But basically, it does say hold with a slight lean towards buy for long term investors. Now, this does differ a little bit from GPT-40's calculations because it only does two and this one does three. But with Claude, what you can actually do is you can actually go a lot further if you want to be a bit more scientific. Now, this step right here, you don't really need to do, but this is just basically some extra stuff that I was playing around with the large language models. And I found that this is what you can do. So you can then use this prompt. But you can see right here that this is rather long and it says, I need to perform a discounted cash flow analysis for Microsoft. Please help me determine appropriate values for the discount rate and terminal growth rate by following these steps. And this is basically something that gives you more scientific values, but you can use that. And of course, once again, you just input this in. Like I said before, I should leave this in the description. If not, it's going to be in my school community. But anyways, this is a really long and more scientific process of actually finding out the valuation of the company. Of course, there are many different ways that you can use these values. But of course, you can see that it is going through all of these things right here. And you can see that it is giving the valuation. Now, of course, with this one, we do get a lot lower value. But this is quite different because, of course, with Microsoft, you have to understand it as a tech company. So that is going to be why these tech companies are a little bit different in terms of the DCF value that you use. Usually when you're valuing, you know, tech companies with more risk or growth potential, 10% to 15% might make more sense considering the growth percentage of the companies. But with this conservative estimate, if you're estimating companies that are, you know, like, for example, Costco or, for example, Walmart or other companies, those companies companies that maybe have taken a recent hit that you might want to analyze are going to basically give you a lot more in terms of the value to see if it is completely undervalued or overvalued. And then, and then what you can see I'm about to do here is I'm just going to use the same basic thing for Claude. I'm not going to go ahead and do the complicated one, but I'm going to do this same again with Intel. The reason I want to use Intel in this, and I'm just going to use the screenshots you can see here, the valuation measures, of course, the financial highlights. And then I took a picture of the financials. This is all from the Yahoo webpage. Now, with this, what you essentially just want to do is, of course, use the simple basic prompt that I used before. Like I said before, it will be in the description. But you can see right here, based on this, at the end, I'm going to get a valuation assumption. You can see right here that it does give us some interesting pieces of information that tells us how much the stock is valued at. It says, based on the valuation methods, you can see right here that the PE ratio looks actually pretty decent. The price to sales ratio looks okay. And through all these valuations, they look pretty average. The only one that we have an issue with is a discounted cash flow because we don't have, you know, future growth rates and discount rates. And given the recent volatility in Intel's financials, the DCF would have a high degree of uncertainty. Then, of course, we get to the final valuation assessment. And you can see that it says Intel's current valuation metrics appear missed. This one seems high, reflecting the recent earnings decline. This one selects more reasonable, but is above historical levels for Intel. The PS ratio for 1.55 is relatively low for a tech company, potentially indicating undervaluation. And this one is lower than many tech peers, significantly showing that it could be undervalued. So of course, it says right here, there's the final recommendation. Given the mixed signals from various valuation metrics and the company's recently challenges, I would cautiously rate Intel as fairly valued to slightly undervalued at its current market cap of 86 point or 83.68 billion. And then, of course, it gives the reason for this, which are the significant cash reserves for potential turnaround, cyclical nature of semiconductor industry, and of course, low ratios compared to tech peers. Of course, there are always reasons for caution, such as the high debt levels, intense competition in the semiconductor space and declining revenue and profitability trend. Now, with all that being said, if you did enjoy this video, don't forget to leave a like, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.